In this video, we're going to talk about something a lot of engineers never think about, how to actually retain what you learn on projects. Because here's the truth, working on projects is one of the fastest ways to learn as an engineer, but if you don't have a system to capture and reuse that knowledge, most of it just slips away. The good news though, it doesn't have to be this way. In this video, I'm gonna share with you six strategies to help you actually retain your engineering knowledge. That way, every project can build on the last one and help to accelerate your growth instead of resetting it. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to need to start creating is a personal knowledge library. Think about it, every project you work on produces gold notes, sketches, spreadsheets, example calcs, and even emails with critical decisions. But over time, all this stuff disappears into old job folders, random notepads, or even someone else's inbox. That's why you need a personal knowledge library, a single home for all these valuable insights. It could be a OneNote notebook, a Notion database, a set of folders on your computer, or even just a physical binder if you prefer paper. I personally use a combination of folders on my computer and an iPad app called Notability, but I've seen people using all of these methods. The exact way you choose to store all this information is really up to you, but the key with this library is how you organize it. Don't just dump things in there, make sure that you categorize things, whether that be by material, element or file type, just make sure it's usable. Over time, this library will become your personal engineering encyclopedia. Instead of constantly Googling or digging through standards, you'll have your own custom references built from your personal experience. And the best part is, the more projects that you complete, the more powerful this library becomes. Now, a big trap when it comes to building a personal library is not capturing key information as soon as you come across it. And this takes us to our next strategy, which is take notes immediately. Say someone shows you a new button in a software, or you have a quick chat with a senior engineer about how a detail should actually be designed. Odds are, if you don't capture it right then and there, you will forget it. Luckily, the solution is pretty simple. Take notes immediately. Don't overthink it, just use bullet points, a sketch, or even a few quick sentences. Even if it's messy, as long as you understand it, it's better than nothing. Just be sure to capture whatever it is and the reasoning behind it. And the reasoning behind it is actually the most important part. Without it, you'll look back months later and think, why did I actually do that again? And you won't remember. So build the habit. Keep a notebook or app open during design and jot down what you learn as it happens. It might feel small in the moment, but those little notes will save you from endless confusion later on. All right, and number three is to utilize worked examples. Another common trap engineers fall into is doing quick, messy calculations just to get the job done. And yeah, I know it works in the moment, but the problem is, is that you don't leave yourself a clean example to build on next time. So if it's a calculation you know you'll be repeating, like a footing design, a beam check, or a wind pressure calculation, it's worth taking the time to polish it up. Turn it into a proper work example you can save, label, and store in your knowledge library. When you do this, it's important to focus on making it reusable, so be sure to add context. Things like what assumptions you made and what code clauses you referenced. Doing this allows future you or even someone you're mentoring to pick it up and understand the logic behind it straight away. In general, worked examples are a great tool because they don't just capture the numbers, they combine theory and practical engineering together. I think the best way to think about it is that you're building a collection of ready-made solutions. Each example you polish and save gives you a shortcut for future projects. Also, if you're looking for other ways to remember tricky STEM concepts while also having a bit of fun along the way, the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant, might be exactly what you need. If you haven't heard of Brilliant, Brilliant is one of the top online learning platforms for STEM. On Brilliant, there are thousands of interactive lessons across topics like math, science, computer science, and AI. What makes Brilliant different is how interactive it is. Each lesson teaches you through puzzles and games and uses creative diagrams to explain things in better ways. Each lesson has been created so that you're not just sitting back and watching, you're actually solving problems as you go. Lately, I've been checking out their math courses and I think they're perfect for anyone who wants to brush up on these skills. The way Brilliant uses visuals and step-by-step -step problem solving to make things click is really impressive. If you're the kind of person who learns best by doing, you'll get a lot out of these lessons. If you're keen to see what Brilliant can do for yourself, be sure to use my link in the description. And if you do use my link, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it. Okay, and the next strategy is teach others. Now, this definitely doesn't have to be a big formal lesson with lots of planning. 
No, this could be as simple as doing something like walking a junior through a calculation you just finished, explaining a concept to a colleague over lunch, or even just talking a contractor through why a detail matters while you're on site. When you do this, you're forced to slow down and organize your thoughts. You can't just rely on gut instinct, you have to explain the logic step by step. And in that process, you'll often notice the gaps in your own understanding. Plus, teaching makes knowledge actually stick. You'll remember it longer because you've had to process it actively, not just passively. And as a further bonus, you'll build trust as someone who's willing to share knowledge, which always pays off in the long run. And while explaining things out loud is one way to strengthen your memory, another powerful method is to make your knowledge visual, which brings us to our next strategy, which is to create visual memory aids. From my experience, a lot of engineers are visual thinkers. And what I mean by this is that things like a sketch, a table, or a flowchart are far more useful and memorable compared to a page full of notes. And knowing this, it's something that we wanna take full advantage of. For example, you could sketch out a flowchart of how you approached a tricky design check or annotate a drawing to highlight the key details that drove your decision. Likewise, you might want to pull together frequently used tables and turn them into a quick cheat sheet. Over time, these sort of visuals will become those references that just jog your memory instantly. In fact, for me, I found that these sort of personal summaries are some of the resources that I go back to the most, so creating them was definitely time well spent. All right, and the next way to retain what you learn from each project is to capture what you've learned from your mistakes. Now, while mistakes can be embarrassing and something that you want to fix quickly and just forget about, they're some of the most powerful learning experiences you'll ever have. So you really should be documenting them. When something goes wrong, whether it's a calculation error, a design assumption that didn't hold, or even a miscommunication with a client, don't just move on. Take a moment to write down what happened, why it happened, and how you'd approach it differently next time. Yes, it can feel uncomfortable to review your mistakes, but the engineers who grow the fastest aren't the ones who avoid mistakes, they're the ones who reflect on them and build systems to prevent them happening again. Try to think of mistakes as data, not your identity. No one is perfect and mistakes are bound to happen but the more we can capture them, the more we can learn from them. A saying that I like to keep in my mind is, one mistake is an accident, the same mistake again is a choice. And that's really the key. If you take the time to document and learn from your mistakes, each one becomes a stepping stone instead of a setback. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, you might like to check out this other video I made where I go through 10 equations you're definitely gonna need to have in your engineering library. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.